going to start this piece uh, with pattern in mind. So generally I start a piece with uh, kind of an underpainting of just some color and I tend towards a kind of grid, which is a pattern. I've got a limited palette here of a gray, a white, my favorite quinacridone gold. Love that color. And some some really dull yellows. So this is just to get some paint down on the paper, some color as a beginning for a study in pattern. Now you'll notice when I put a color down somewhere, I tend to repeat it. So I put this green down here and then repeated it here and here. And that begins to establish pattern. Pattern is really the repetition of a motif, and it doesn't mean necessarily the exact uh, repeat of the exact motif. But kind of the suggestion of repetition. So, so far we have kind of repeating squares and rectangular shapes. I'm going to stick with this same brush, this one, and make some really big sort of outline shapes that kind of suggest pattern, like it's a part of a much bigger pattern. So kind of again a repeating shape. I am choosing a circle, uh, which is pretty easy to get my head around. Oh, I don't know, is that going to go right off the page? Yes, it is. Okay. Is that enough? I don't know, maybe I'll just do the suggestion of something down here. And I don't really know where this is going, but that's fine. This is an exploration of pattern. While the paint's wet, I'm going to give those circles a little variation. And now I'm going to use a new brush and introduce a new color, this kind of uh, yellowy green, and get some small repeating shapes in here. So just a square, just a simple square made with a flat brush. I'm just layering this pattern over the previous pattern. And do I want this to go all the way across the page? I might. Okay. Now this green is getting lost in some of the areas. It's getting lost down here because it's backed by a turquoise getting lost up here because there's a little turquoise here, so I'm going to add just a little bit of a deeper green here. Oops, that's kind of that's kind of strong. This is a little phthalo green. I'll just give those shapes a little variation of color, that is. Now one of my favorite tools is the eraser end of a pencil to make patterns. I'm going to start out right here and just use it as a stamp. I'm using the same white paint as I had out on my palette. Another one of my favorite tools or materials is these um, watercolor crayons. Let's see. I'm going to make another pattern of squares over here. I 
And again, these will sort of disappear where the colors are very close, sort of in this red-orange area. Whereas they'll stand out nicely against the lighter neutrals. And so to help them stand out against these areas, I'm going to clean that one off, add some lighter orange, same material, watercolor crayons. So now I'm thinking I want to enhance these green squares and uh, I may just try this, I don't know, this uh, crayon, oops, my crayons keep breaking. Not sure I love it, but I could do it in some of them. And then maybe make this dash into kind of a broken line. And that starts to set up a sort of patterny looking thing. Another thing I'm noticing here is that these these um, white dots over here are kind of hanging out on their own. And I want to repeat them somewhere. So I'm going to take the same pencil and try like a line of them. And so I've come to the point in this piece where I'm not quite sure what I want to do, but this is standing out a little too much, this is standing out a little too much. Uh, I'm thinking of maybe just putting a little glaze of semi-opaque color that's going to obscure some of this. I might totally wreck the painting, but I'm not that concerned at this point. In fact, I have too much paint on my brush from a previous application, so. Okay, so here what I've got is a combination of glazing medium and a little bit of an opaque uh, light yellow. Okay. And that looks like it's obscuring some of the orange squares I put here. And that is because that's water-soluble crayon and there's a little water in my paint here. So see what that does. And then down here, this is kind of bugging me, so I'm going to take a little more glazing medium with a little paint in it. It's got a little gray in it now, so I'm just going to go over that, cover a little bit of it. And while I'm at it, I'm going to emphasize this gray area as a really flat area. It has uh, had some layering and some depth, but all of it has layering and depth. So I want some areas to contrast with that. Okay, now here comes uh, more of the fun part. I've got this Signo pen. It's a white gel pen uh, from Uniball. Anyways, it makes a really great opaque white line over dark colors. So I'm just going to play with it and I'm going to continue this this line of dots where I partly obscured it. I'm going to continue it here in just outline. Then I might just begin another set of patterns with my white pen. I'm 
just going to let this pattern overlap the other pattern underneath. I'm kind of ignoring it. Letting it place one layer over another and seeing how they interact. And then one of my other favorite tools is the pit pens. And this I'm not even going to consider pattern. I'm just making line. Line that has something to do with going with what's going on underneath it. But it's going to create its own little little pattern as well. There. That's a start. Maybe I'll take a, a finer marker. Pit pen, that is. And try a little, a little more line. Let's see. 